Okay, that's good. Okay, so this is a phone book application which uh, goes out and downloads uh, phone book listings. It's pretty, you know, straightforward, sleepy phone bookness. Um, but the coolness happens when you get deeper in. So if I click on photographers and then click on portrait, this, what you're seeing right here is the ad that gets put in a print phone book. So this is a, a partnership between uh, a print phone book and a uh, uh, iPhone app developer. That's that's what gets printed in the hard hard copy phone book. Now, uh, one cool feature of this application is that you can actually view the website within the context of the application. So those familiar with iPhone app development, this is done through embedding uh, uh, embedded WebKit in the application, um, and. What you will see is a promo code that gets offered to users of this application that offers a discount of sitting for, for sitting fees. Okay, so the owner of this iPhone application has uh, more ad inventory that they can sell, um, but it's uh, this is inventory that is specific to. Um, the needs of the customer, um, meaning that this is a simple, a simplistic example. It could be more context aware. It could respond to location. It could respond to any number of other contextual uh, uh, things that the application knows about the user. So it's not just a, a new ad delivery mechanism. It, it's a way to insert uh, kinetics rules into an iPhone application. Now, um, the way this is done is uh, if you embed WebKit within an iPhone application, uh, you have more leeway in terms of uh, augmenting the DOM, basically. You can't do this within mobile Safari because Apple, Steve Jobs has his death grip on that. But this is one area where you can develop Kinex applications. And then I would consider this an OEM browser, an OEM extension because it's uh, bolting on, on on top of something that already exists. Okay. Now, um, I saved the, the biggie for last. Information cards uh, are very, they have a dimension above and beyond other endpoints uh, that is significant. Uh, and that is, well, one of the, the immediate benefits of an information card endpoint is the fact that you're aggregating your endpoint and you're creating a platform upon which applications can be shared without new endpoints having to be opted into by the, by the user. Uh, so if I have the selector installed, um, Bob Woolley could email me a card and I could install it and the application would then be active without me having to download anything new. Uh, so that's a very powerful thing. Uh, information cards, are, as Sam showed you, can be generated directly out of App Builder. And uh, distribution channels for information cards uh, are currently limited, but they won't be. Uh, there, there's going to be um, lots of different ways to get your cards distributed, but right now you can distribute them for, through uh, Kinetics' app directory, other download sites, through Azigo, uh, and future card distribution systems. At the opt-in process, after you've installed the selector, as I said, the opt-in process is simply installing the card in your selector. So it's, it's uh, low friction after the selector is installed. And the, I'll say this again, the cool thing about an information card endpoint is the fact that you are you have an endpoint platform and you're aggregating endpoints uh, for other applications. And, and this is what Sam showed you, that you can simply generate information cards directly out of App Builder and download them or post them to, post them to App Directory. Uh, you can customize your image and you can do uh, uh, you can do with it what you will after it's created. 
So a, a note about distribution. So if you go to appdirectory.kinetics.com, uh, this is what you'll see. That's, this is our basic download site for Kinetics applications right now. And you can select uh, uh, different distribution models within App Builder. So as you're developing your application, you can say, yes, I want this published to uh, App Directory. I want it published as a bookmarklet. And I also want to give away my source code. So you, you can do any number of things with your, with your application in App Directory. Uh, but the, the concept of an app marketplace is an important uh, evolutionary step that we see as necessary in developing the kind of ecosystem that we want uh, that will enable you as developers to sell applications uh, and to have a distribution channel for selling applications that is uh, similar to uh, other application ecosystems. So there's so many to choose from. Uh, which one is right for my app? Uh, I, I have uh, fairly strong opinions, and I express them often. Um, the, in terms of selecting uh, endpoints for application deployment, um, I am all about helping the developer figure out what is the appropriate endpoint for their application thinking about the future of their application. Uh, I'm not gonna walk through this, but I, I can give you this uh, decision tree after the conference or we can provide it to you. This is my own thought process for uh, selecting which app endpoint is appropriate. And it, you may notice that information cards and browser plugins are, are down towards the end. That's not because I don't favor those, it's because I want to catch the outliers first. So if you have your own private network that you want to deploy rules against, by all means use a proxy server. If you have an application which the use case for the application is user invocation directly, by all means use a bookmarklet. You know, but those, I, I see those as uh, potentially less common than applications that uh, augment the user's experience just based on their browsing, their normal natural browsing. Uh, but some of the things to consider uh, in terms of the endpoint, uh, one is distribution. So what's the best way to get your app to users? Is there a channel that fits already? You know, it may make sense to publish it uh, some in, into a community that exists already. And what opt-in model fits best? So you don't want to pick an endpoint that has an opt-in model that doesn't fit your, uh, your application function. Uh, another important question in, in terms of application function, function is, does the app use personally identifiable information? Uh, obviously, information cards provide uh, the strongest mechanism for that, but just because your app may use personally identifiable information, that does not mean that you have to use information cards. You can uh, have OEM browser extensions or browser extensions directly out of App Builder that can integrate with uh, personally identifiable information or personal information, just to abbreviate it, uh, without using information cards. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Where will the app be active? And uh, what's the basic function of the app? Uh, you also want to consider your business model. How does the app create value? And what What's the point, right? And uh, what's the revenue model for your app? And it, if you plan on explicitly selling the app, obviously your uh, distribution and your distribution channel and endpoint will uh, be affected by that. Now, I'm going to say this, and, and Phil may not like me if I say this, but I really we're planning on new uh, endpoint domains. So I talked earlier about. Right now, we're focused on the browser domain for endpoints. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the possibility of developing endpoints for uh, email clients, telephony apps, other things. So uh, 